Hello and welcome to the Week of Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 19th of July 2019 and the time has just gone 8.58 British Summer Time. Uh, and we're looking ahead to next week which is Monday the 22nd until Friday the 26th of July. Um, and before we take a look at, what's at, big, at the big events of next week, let's just recap uh, of the major events that happened in the week just gone. Uh, so at the very beginning of the week, uh, we had a strong start to uh, equities, particularly U.S. equities. Uh, we had record highs in, the, in some of the major U.S. indices. Um, but on Tuesday, um, President Trump uh, basically got a, had a little dig at Beijing um, and let, let the, the government in China know that um, trade tariffs could be slapped on, on, on a additional um, goods of up to $325 billion worth. Uh, he also let kind of the Chinese government know and the financial markets know that um, the, the, a trade deal has a, still has a long way to go. So the update from President Trump didn't really send traders running for the hills, but those those who've, who've had a quite a good run on, uh, on global equities and particularly U.S. equities in recent weeks and months uh, encourage a bit of profit taking. So we've kind of retreated from retreated from the um, the kind of all time highs that we saw at the very beginning of the week in in, uh, in U.S. trade. In US, um, in US equities. Uh, just overnight, or yesterday, late last night, we heard from uh, Richard Clarida of the Federal Reserve, who said the Federal Reserve um, should actually look to uh, should, should, should look to act in terms of interest rate cuts uh, before the US economy you know, slows down. So there's been some, there's some there's, there have been some people saying unemployment rate in the US is near a 50 year low, wages are strong, Inflation is low. Retail sales are decent. It seems to me that you know the U.S. economy, in some aspects, is in quite good shape. Although other aspects are are, are a bit softer. Why? Why is so, so everyone so aggressively calling for rate cuts? But as Mr. Clarida said, um, his thinking is that the Federal Reserve should act in advance. You know, you, you can see the slowdown, or there are some signs of weakness, and that today has kind of you know lifted uh, equ equities um, across the world. So it's the same old story, uh, whereby. The conversations around U.S.-China trade and also speculation about what the Federal Reserve is going to do have been the kind of major drivers of U.S. equities, and both have kind of acted as a, as, as back and forth. Earlier this week, uh, we kicked off with the uh, U.S. reporting season, and in terms of actual corporate updates, it was very kind of interesting on that front, but it didn't really move the market, they kind of glow up you know, the, the indices a whole lot because, like I said, it's more to do with, you know, the Federal Reserve and what they're going to potentially do and U.S.-China trade relations. All of the major U.S. banks, um, by and large, earnings um, managed to actually, um, and revenues largely exceed expectations, but a common theme, a uh, continued theme across U.S. banks is that um, the trading departments tend to, tend to have underperformed and tend to be a bit weak. Um, they're focusing more on uh, retail banking and lending, uh, and also on advisory services and wealth, wealth management services. And in many cases, some of the banks actually produced uh, lower net interest margin rates, which is essentially um, the, the, the money that banks make on lending. So it's a bit of an indication that the, the, the very kind of sharp move lower in bond yields is already beginning to impact um, U.S. banks in terms of profitability. And we haven't even had any kind of rate cuts yet if we do have any. So it gives an indication of what kind of future earnings expectations we could be looking at down the line. Um, there are some of the kind of the major themes of this week. Um, looking ahead to next week, let's quickly run through some of the major events and then we'll look at a few charts. Uh, so at the beginning of next week on Tuesday, we should know who has won the Tory party leadership contest. And uh, obviously, it, it, it's so people, obviously it's between uh, Jeremy Hunt and, and, um, and Boris Johnson. And Boris Johnson has been has been the favourite to, uh, to 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 take the top job. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, in relation to Brexit, um, that's obviously going to be at the forefront of, of traders' minds. Both Mr. Hunt and Mr. Johnson have talked about renegotiating the withdrawal agreement that Theresa May um, hammered out with the European Union. Uh, earlier this week, we've heard from Michel Barnier, who said that in relation to the Irish border situation, um, there could be alternative solutions could be operable. So it's, it's a bit. Uh, of optimism there, uh, it's it's slightly suggests um, that the European Union is slightly softening the stance, possibly because uh, both candidates who were who were, who were uh, vying for the prime ministership seem to be um, seem to be dedicated to actually renegotiating. But the but the fact that um, Mr. Mr. Barney has said this gives some traders some traders became less fearful 
that the uh, no deal Brexit would happen, although it's still the default position. Uh, on Tuesday, we also have a first half figures from Fever Tree, the uh, the mineral company. The the, the gin craze that that's that swept the UK in the last couple of years has seen their uh, their tonic water prove to be very popular. Uh, second quarter figures from Tesla. Um, on Wednesday, we have French, German manufacturing and service figures. This is going to be of close importance uh, because they're the two largest economies in the in the in the eurozone, and the, they're, they're, they're the two largest sectors of the respective economies. German manufacturing has been the standout underperformer. Um, it's been in, in the red. It's been in contraction territory all the way throughout 2019. That's very worrying because it's a large, it's, it's a bigger part of the German economy, and the German economy is a big influencer uh, in the in the eurozone. U.S. manufacturing is just about eking out, um, ex- uh, just about eking out growth. That's also going to be released um, on Wednesday, as is second quarter figures from Facebook and first half figures from Metro Bank. Thursday, European Central Bank update. Um, the, Fed, the, the, the European Central Bank are a bit nervous about the, what the Fed Reserve are going to do because at the very end of July, we'll have the update from the Fed Reserve in relation to interest rates. And the speculation is we're going to have lower interest rates from the Fed. So the, so the European Central Bank may want to kind of get out ahead of them and actually either look to use some, some dovish language to try and talk the euro lower because if the Fed do cut at the end of the month, that could put upward pressure on the euro, and let's face it, the euros, the European Central Bank would prefer a softer single currency. Um, on Thursday, we also have second quarter figures from Amazon and Intel. On Friday, we have the advanced reading of the second quarter growth figures from the US, and we also have first half figures from Rightmove. So take a look now at some of the, uh, the major equity indices. So the wider view of, the, of that global equities is that they've had a good run in 2019. This year is the FTSE 100 and a solid run throughout 2019. I reached a multi-month high at the beginning of the month, but we broadly kind of drifted a bit lower. But we have found decent support in around this area, just south of 7,500, down, down to more kind of 7,485 that region, or maybe 7,000. 470. As long as we can hold above this area, we, it's likely that the wider upper trend could continue. I'm sure we take off the recent highs here. That could, that could, that could pave the way for this region, 7,797 to be, be, be tested. Notice how, despite the, the gentle pullback in the last, say, week and a half of the FTSE, we're still comfortably above the blue line here, and the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 7,387. Um, I'll be talking about the 50 moving average across the DAX and the S&P in, in, a, in, a, in the next couple of charts. And essentially, um, while all those indices hold above the respective 50 moving averages, it's likely that the wider upward trend in global, in global stocks is going to continue. Similar picture here on the DAX. A multi-month high was achieved in early, January, in early July, but we have been drifting lower. But notice how the DAX found some support from its 50-day moving average, this blue line here. And if you could hold above that, it's likely that the wider positive trend could continue. And if you do manage to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this region here at 12,460. And beyond that, you could take it north of 12,600 up to 12,660. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting a uh, level that's seen since last July up around 12,887. And even if you do have a break below this blue line here, the 50 moving average support could, could be found from the psychologically important 12,000 mark. Take a look at what's going on over in the US on the S&P 500. So like I said, the S&P 500 racked up a all-time high at the beginning of the week, so that tells you how bullish in, in sentiment is. And we I recorded this video at just after 9 o'clock in the morning, so all, already the, the, the futures are indicating we're, we're going to open not a million miles from the all-time high. So the sentiment is clearly very positive in the U.S. If we re- te- if we kind of get to continue on the higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 3,020 the um, on the S&P 500. Traders, because we're in, in uncharted, uncharted territory, traders are looking out for kind of you know big numbers like 3,030, 3,040, so on and so forth. Um, even if we do manage to drift lower, support could come into play in this region here in around 2,952. Notice how we are comfortably above, well above, its 50-day moving average, which just did manage to act as support in early June. And if a metric has acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely it will do so in the future. Obviously, there are no guarantees. 
Uh, I'll quickly take a look at Euro Sterling because obviously Brexit is going to be at the forefront of, of traders' minds next week and as and we also have the European Central Bank update. But basically between um, early May and mid-July, we have had a very kind of positive six-week run on Euro Sterling. Uh, so the, the trend is clearly to the upside, but if you just take a look at the last couple of days um, price action, if we were to blend these two candles here together, we could. this could be argued uh, that this is a daily bearish reversal. So we could potentially see a bit of a move to the downside uh, in Euro Sterling because keep in mind it's rallied for about six weeks. We haven't had a, had a sizable pullback in Euro Sterling in a while. This could potentially be it. Um, and if you do manage to drift a bit lower on Euro Sterling, support could be found from this area here in around uh, zero spot 88.72, which isn't too far away from the 50-day moving average, which acted as support back in early May. If the wider trend does manage to continue, and if you take off the recent highs, we could be looking at targeting this area here in at zero spot 91.60. Um, that's all for me this week. Uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CFC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.